Hello everyone and welcome to day 53 of the 1000 days of no code challenge. Yesterday we talked about backend workflow and how they help us manage things in the background. In today's video, let's look how backend workflows can be used in our applications. So, let's get started. In the previous video, we saw what backend workflow is. In today's video, let's explore how backend workflows can be used in real life cases. So I'll be talking about two examples in today's video and there could be multiple such cases that you can use in your application. So whenever you allow your users to register on the platform and they give their email ID, you might want to confirm if the email ID that they've given is truly theirs. There are multiple ways of doing that and one of it is sending a OTP to their email address. So let's quickly build that functionality and see how and why should we use backend workflow for sending the OTP to the email address that they've used for registration. So I'll be going to data, data types, user, and I'll add two fields. One is OTP, which I'll make it as text. And then, and then, email verified, which will be yes or no field, right? And by default, the email verified will be no. Now we are on the registration page. And when we click on register, we had already added the sign the user up workflow. Now we could create the OTP and send the OTP from the front end itself, right? Something like make changes to think. We will make it as current user and change another field select OTP and you have something called search for calculate formula and then you have generate random string here you can mention what is the length I'll make it as 4 and you can mention what all to be used whether you want letters non-capital letters numbers special characters I'll use numbers here right and that is getting saved in your OTP now you can say send email and this will be current user email and then sender name could be your app name subject is email verification okay body can be this is your otp i'm not going to refine this uh, body here because the motive is to learn how to send the OTP, right? So I'm sending this is your OTP and result of step two's OTP, which is getting saved in the database. Now let's see if this works fine, right? And then I'll tell you why we have to do it from backend. So I'm going to uh, the registration page. So I'm going to preview this. I'm logged out. I'm going to give the email address here, abcd plus one, two, three, contribute with seven.com name, let's say, email verify phone number okay and then let's select 8th january password 12345 i'll check this i agree to terms and conditions box and i'll click on register okay so let's go to the database once and here we can see this particular record being created with email verified as no and otps 1311 Okay, let me quickly go to my inbox. So I've got the email which says um, this is your OTP with 1311. But all of this is running from your browser. Let me log out and show you how this can be misused. So I'll just click on log out from here. I'll just change this to 456. And let me change this to 14th of January 12345 as password. I'll check this checkbox and there are a lot of inspect tools which are available for developers to use and bubble also gives you something called step by step. Okay, so let me click on step by step and I'll click on register. So now you know what is happening behind the scenes. So I'll click on this, right? You can see the sign the user up is happening here. Then we have this one where we can see not available in debugger. Okay, which is good. This seems good but I'll click on run next 
and you see that the OTP is coming here, right? You can see the OTP on the front end. And this defeats the purpose of creating the OTP because developers can then use some debugger tools or inspect tools to see what is the OTP and then use that to verify their email address. So it's very important to not display any sensitive information on the front end and only deal with them from the backend workflows. So this is the first use case that we can see today. So I'll quickly show you how this front end can be turned into a backend workflow. I'll go to the backend workflow. I'll click on this new button and go to general, select API workflow, email verification, right? and expose as a public API workflow can be unchecked. Ignore privacy rules. Click on add a new parameter. Key can be user and type can also be user. And now I'll go to the workflow. This particular, this particular workflow, I will cut from here, come to the backend workflow, paste it over here. And this, instead of current user, we'll make this as user, which is a parameter that we created. We'll come back to workflow, right click on send email, cut this, go to the backend workflow and paste this. Now you can see that there is some issue being shown. This is because we were referring to result of step two, right? Which we cut from the workflow here. This is showing result of, we had selected result of step two, which we cut from the workflow. And now all we have to do is result of step one and OTP is already selected. Now, one last thing to do is go to workflow and from here, you schedule an API workflow and select email verification. Who is the user in this case? It is current user. Scheduled date and time can be current date and time, right? And ignore privacy rules when running the workflow. So now let's quickly check if this works fine. I'm going to the front end. I'm going to the preview mode and refreshing the page, logging out myself, and then I'll try with ABCD plus 789 at the rate rate7.com. For those of you who do not know, you can use one of your existing emails and then put a plus and add any random text, right? Like one, two, three, four, five, six, a, B, C, D, or like trial one, trial two, trial three, right? And this email becomes a valid email. And this is how, this is how most of the developers or testers use email IDs to test various scenarios. So I'll put the name, test two, phone number, some random numbers. Date can be 4th of January, password one, two, three, four, five or anything. And then I check this checkbox and click on register. Now, this particular workflow of creating the OTP and sending it via email is happening from the backend workflow and the user will not be able to see what is that, right? So let's go to the data and check if that is getting generated. And that is getting generated. We have got 7892. And if I go to my email to fetch this, Right, so I've got that email as well, right? We need to design a front end where the user can input their OTP and we can verify if this is correct. Now we have sent the OTP. Now we'll have to verify if the OTP that they enter on the front end matches the OTP that we have in the database. And for that, I'm going to create a group. Okay, and this will be email verify we can add a text over here enter otp and then we can add an input box right which could be otp yeah you can also mention limit the number of characters in this case you need a max of four numbers so you can put that then you can add a button, which could be called verify. Okay, now this particular group, I'll increase. And then let's make this button as well, 
um, as 200 and this also as 200 with 45 as height 45 as height one of the things that we can do is put all of this in a group and group could be fixed container for now. We have understood how the columns and all of that works. But as of now, I just want to put it in fixed and hide it when we click on register, right? Likewise, this is already a group. Logout button is there. Uh, we have this terms and conditions here. This is already a group. Let's quickly uh, align a few things because we want to hide this once we click on register and show this particular group. And for that, let's select all these elements and put it in a column container, right? We already know what is column container now. And let me make it as 15 pixels of gap between row. This is already a reusable element, which is good. Uh, I'll just delete this. Uh, we can have this. This side. I will delete this text and I'll go to the page, make this as column. Okay, so everything comes one below the other. Uh, we can make it as center aligned. Okay, and let's go to this particular group and make it as center aligned as well. Uh, let's come to this OTP and make it as center aligned. Uh, we can remove the width from 365 to make it as 200, right? And uh, leave it this way. We can add a row gap of 15 pixels. Okay, so we want this to be hidden by default. Okay, and collapse one hidden. This is fine because we want them to either register or log in. So I'll also get this to center. Of course, it doesn't make sense to show log out when they are logging in, but we can refine it as we move on. Okay, so let me just preview this to see how it looks. So we have the registration here. We have the login here. Okay. Couple of things that we have to do is put this particular group. Uh, let's make it as 20 height and it will automatically get adjusted based on the content that we have. And let's make this as group register. And now go to register and edit workflow. And we want to hide an element that is our group register and we want to show an element that is group email verify. One more important thing is when we click on verify, we do not want to be verifying this on the front end, okay? Because they can do trial and error and see what is the real password. And that's why we will be creating a backend workflow again to verify the email. So here we have email verification flow. I'll add one more and general API workflow. I'll tell this is verify OTP, right? Expose as a public workflow can be unchecked. And here this could be OTP, which is the text and user, which is also of type user. Now go here select data, make changes to thing, and select the user that is coming as a parameter, change another field, and you can mention email verified equals to yes, and only if the user's OTP is OTP, right? User here is the user record in the database which we are getting as a parameter. The OTP here refers to the OTP that belongs to that particular user. And this OTP is the OTP parameter that we have here. Okay. Now, and what we have done is we have set the email verified equals to yes for that particular user, only if the OTP matches. One last step, go to the workflow, select the verify button, and the workflow can be schedule API workflow and this will be verify OTP. Here, the OTP is the input that we have for OTP. User is current user and this is current date and time. And one last thing so that the user knows that their email is verified. 
I'll go to workflow. I'll click on plus. And then I want to do when condition is true. Right. And then I will put a condition here that is current users email verified is yes. Then air alert email verified. Your email has been verified. Right now, if you want to send them to uh, any particular page, you can do that with navigation. Go to page and then you can probably send them to tweet or any such page. Let's see if this is working fine. This is all jumbled up. Please bear with me and let's try ABCD plus anything, right? At with7.com. Name can be test three. Phone number, date of birth can be first January, password one, two, three, four, five, or anything. And then I'll check this checkbox, click on register, right? Uh, so we can see that this particular group has come. We had to put the condition for this group as well. They have missed that, but that's okay, right? Let's understand the concept. So enter OTP is here. We have to enter the OTP here. And let me just grab the email that I've got just now. Okay, OTP is 1162. So let me put 1162 and click on verify, right? So you can see that email verification has been done and it takes me to the tweet page. This is how you can use backend workflow in real use cases. I know the video has been slightly longer, but this was important for you to understand everything in one flow. Now that you know how to use backend workflows, it's time for you to put this knowledge into action. Backend workflow is all about simplifying, behind the scenes work for your application so that you do not have to have a human to send the notification or reminder or anything of that sort. And this brings a seamless experience for your users and they will start loving your application. In the next video, we will discover how do we run the backend workflow on list of things, making automation even more powerful. So stay tuned and don't miss it. See you in the next one.